Hey guys, it's Sagar and my 15th video of this year is the long term review of this iPhone 13. I got this phone on the launch day so it has been with me for around 6 months and during that time I have used it as my main phone for around 2 months and my wife has been using it as her main phone for the remaining time. It was launched at 79,900 rupees but just recently we have seen a price drop of 5 to 7,000 rupees depending on the color that you go for. There is also a new green color option which Apple launched recently in their March event. So for 75,000 rupees should you get the iPhone 13 now? Does what it offers justify the price? Does it even make sense to get it now since it is already half year old or should you just skip it and wait for the iPhone 14? I will answer all these questions and a lot more in this video. Many people don't realize but Apple actually reduced the price of the iPhone 13 by 5000 rupees compared to the iPhone 12. Yes, it still started at 79,900 rupees but for that price you get 128 GB of internal storage as opposed to 64 GB like on the iPhone 12. Yes, it is not cheap and it is not at all a value for money option if you look at other Android offerings at a similar price. But it is definitely a better valued iPhone compared to the iPhone 13 Pros. It offers you 90% of what the iPhone 13 Pros offer at two thirds the price which I think is a pretty good deal. Other than the new colors, diagonal placement of the cameras, smaller notch at the front and slightly lower placement of the buttons, the overall size and design largely remains the same as the iPhone 12 and that is not really a bad thing. Design is subjective but I really like the flat edges and the fact that the screen and the back glass sits flushed with the frame of the phone. The corners are curved so the frame of the phone doesn't feel too uncomfortable to hold while using it with just one hand. I said this for the iPhone 12 and I'm saying it again. I really like the anodized aluminium frame. It gives us a bit of grip and doesn't gather any fingerprints or smudges. Sadly, I can't say the same for the back of this phone. This glossy back gathers a ton of smudges. Fortunately, the pink color is good at hiding them. If you don't want the back of your phone to look all dirty, go with one of the lighter colors like pink or starlight. These colors also get a lighter frame which makes the overall bezels of your phone look smaller. It gets the same 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR display as the iPhone 12 with a slightly smaller notch and marginally better typical peak brightness. The notch is smaller but just like with the iPhone 10, 10s, 10R, 11 and 12, you just forget about it in a day or two. Even though it is smaller and there is extra space next to it, Apple just isn't making use of that extra space in any way. Which is a shame because it would have been great to have the option to display battery percent over there. The display is still AMOLED, still really sharp and watching SGA content on it is just a treat thanks to the white color gamut. All in all, you won't have any complaints with this display other than maybe its refresh rate. It is still a 60Hz panel. While almost all the phones in this price range and even much lower price range have shifted to 90 or 120Hz refresh rate displays, Apple still keeps them reserved just for the pro iPhones this year. If you are coming from any of the previous generation iPhones, you might not miss the higher refresh rate display since you have never tried it before. But when the rest of the competition is getting it on the phones which are priced much lower than this, you can't help but feel being left out. Other than this, it's a top notch display. It looks great even when you put it against the iPhone 13 Pro. And if you put these phones in a case and place them side by side, I don't think anyone will be able to tell them apart. Apple says that the glass on this phone is the most durable one on any phones in the market. I am not the one who likes to test this out. So I'll have to put a screen protector on my phone right from the day one and also use it with a case. That gives me a perfect segue to talk about today's sponsor, MacBag. They make amazing cases and accessories for your new phone. This MacBag case for the iPhone 13 fits the phone very securely and it has a very nice soft touch feel to it. Corners at the front and the camera module at the back gets raised lip so they stay protected when you place the phone down on any surface. This case also has some incredibly strong MagSafe magnets built in. This makes it compatible with all the MagSafe accessories out there like this MacBag's own wallet. This wallet auto aligns with the magnets on the back of the case and attaches itself very securely. That's not it. This wallet has a few tricks and features of its own. You can easily slide cards or cash out of it which gets their own individual pockets by the way. It also gets a finger strap which lets you securely hold on to your phone while you're using it. It also becomes a kickstand when you want to watch something without having to occupy either of your hands. MacBag also makes other accessories like this multi-charger. It's a 3-in-1 wireless charger for your MagSafe compatible iPhone, Apple Watch and wireless charging AirPods. This multi-charger is sleek, barely takes up any space, looks smart, is very convenient and it even comes with a 20W power brake in the box. To know more about all the MacBag products, click on the link in the description and make sure to use this code at checkout to get 15% discount on your order. One of the things which I desperately wanted Apple to add to these iPhones is a fingerprint sensor. I don't care where they put it, under the display, in the power button or even at the back. I just wanted to get it so Face ID did not work at all when you had a mask on. Honestly, how difficult could it be if each and every Android manufacturer could put a fingerprint sensor on their phone? 
Well, Apple continued to be their stubborn self and did not include a fingerprint sensor on the 13 series phones. But with iOS 15.4, which just came out last week, Face ID is finally working even if you have your mask on. It took Apple 2 years to add this feature, but you can finally unlock your iPhone without removing your mask or typing your passcode when you're outside. I just wish they brought it sooner though. This iPhone 13 comes with Apple's latest A15 Bionic processor, which unlike every year before this, is slightly under part compared to the chips on the Pro iPhones. They get 4 GPU cores, which is one less core than A15 Bionic on the Pro iPhones. The rest of the specs are same. You might wonder how much of a difference a single GPU core can make. Turns out a lot. On paper, there is a huge difference between the graphics cores of the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro. That being said, I'm not too sure that anyone will even notice the difference even while using these two phones side by side. At this point, I don't even think we need to talk about the performance of this phone. Apple is just the king when it comes to the performance of their phones. This phone will handle anything and everything that you might throw at it and not even break a sweat. Whether you use social media apps for a long time, play a lot of demanding games, multitask or use some productive apps, this iPhone 13 can do it all without even skipping a beat. And this level of performance continues for years to come. There is a lot of headroom on these chips, which helps these iPhones perform to their peak level even after 3 or 4 years. So the performance will not even be the last thing that you might have to worry about if you decide to go with this or any other iPhones for that matter. Other than lacking a few camera features, like the ability to shoot ProRaw images and ProRes videos, all of the software features are same on this iPhone 13 and the much higher priced iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Plus. Other than the hardware itself, iOS has always been one of the key factors which drive most people to iPhones. Some people do feel that it's a bit restrictive and doesn't allow too many customization options, while others like the simplicity, ease of use, security and the consistency it provides. Everything in the UI is well designed and thought out. Animations are smooth and even at just 60Hz, everything feels very fluid. iOS 15 had its fair share of bugs, but Apple was very quick to iron them with updates. So it's not that iOS is flawless, but if you find any major bugs or software issues, rest assured that it will be fixed out as soon as possible. Apple has the best software support when it comes to updates. They provide the latest version of iOS to devices for as long as 5 years in the future at least if not longer. So again software wise, you have nothing to worry about. Last year, I was one of the few people who were pretty satisfied with the battery life on the iPhone 12. I mean, it was not too great, but it still lasted me throughout the day with medium usage. But this iPhone 13 takes its battery life to a whole new level. It easily lasts me an entire day with heavy usage and then some. Look at these battery stats. You can see I got over 5 hours of screen on time on multiple occasions and didn't even consume 50% of the battery on that day. So even if you are a heavy user, you can easily expect to get over 7 hours of screen on time on it. My wife is a light user and for her the battery lasts for 2 full days. This kind of battery backup is amazing, not just for an iPhone but for any phone in general. When it is finally time to charge it up, iPhone 13 does support fast charging. Well, fast charging for Apple, because even these fast charging speeds are nowhere as close to what the competition is offering. If you use the 20 watt adapter, it can reach 50% in just 30 minutes. And the speed gets even faster if you use the 30 watt charging brake. The bad thing is, none of these power brakes come included in the box. Not even the old 5 watt one. So unless you have an old charger lying around, with a new phone you are going to shell out some extra money for a new charger as well. It supports G wireless charging and with a MagSafe compatible wireless charger, you can charge it a bit faster. The other great thing about the battery is that it is holding on to 100% battery health even after 6 months. Last year, my iPhone 12's battery health dropped to 95 or 96% in 6 months. So knowing that this battery will give you amazing battery backup for a long time gives you a peace of mind. Cameras on this iPhone 13 have been a treat to use. Whether you shoot images or videos with it, it doesn't disappoint. The cinematic mode in particular has been really amazing. Since it shoots just in 1080p, I never thought I would be using it all that much. But I was wrong and I use it all the time. The fact that you can change the focus and amount of blur later on is a game changer. If you set the f-stop number properly and adjust the focusing editing, these cinematic mode videos end up looking excellent. I wish for the next iPhones, we get the refocusing option for portrait mode images as well. Unlike the Pros, this 13 gets just two cameras. But the main sensor is not the same bigger 12 megapixel one with f1.6 aperture and sensor sheet stabilization as the 12 Pro Max last year. So its images have much more raw information to work with compared to the iPhone 12, especially in lower lighting conditions. I think this is the phone that most people should get if you are serious about smartphone photography. These might not be the best cameras on a phone, but they are definitely the easiest to use and the ones that will give you the most consistent results. iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max do have an extra lens which offers more versatility to your shots. 
but the price premium they ask for above the regular iPhone 13 is definitely not worth it. For a lot more image and video samples and insight into its cameras, please make sure to check out my dedicated camera review of this iPhone 13. I have also compared its cameras with the iPhone 11, 12 and 13 Pro, so to see where it stands against those phones, you can check those videos as well. I will leave a card to some of those videos on the top right corner of your screen and also link to all of them in the description section. One thing that iPhone 13 gets right over the iPhone 13 Pro is that it gets matte finish around the camera module, which doesn't get the nearly as many dust and debris as the glossy finish around the module on the iPhone 13 Pro. I just hate how much dust gets gathered around the iPhone 13 Pro. I know this doesn't bother everyone as much as it bothers me, but I just wanted you guys to know about it. Small things like well-built buttons, strong haptics, subtle vibrations throughout the user interface, great sounding dual speakers, display that can get pretty bright outdoors and very dim at night, seamless Apple CarPlay integration with simple UI, support for almost all 5G bands, awesome MagSafe accessories which you can put on and take off in a second, and a lot more are the things that take the overall experience of using this phone to a whole new level. To sum it up, this iPhone 13 gives you amazing durable design, great display, amazing media viewing experience, solid performance and battery life, software support for years to come, camera that outperforms most of the phones in the industry, and consistency and reliability in overall day-to-day -day usage. What it doesn't offer you is a notchless display, in-display or a physical fingerprint sensor, high refresh rate screen, super fast charging or a charger in the box, and a telephoto or a macro option in the camera department. I think with all the things it offers, iPhone 13 is a really solid phone for most people. Although it is 6 months old, I think this iPhone is still a really good option if you are looking for a good phone which will serve you really well for the next 3 or 4 years at least. If you want, you could hold back for the iPhone 14, but 1. It is at least 6 months away, so if you need a phone right now, you are out of luck. And 2. All the latest rumors are suggesting that it will still get the same 60Hz refresh rate and possibly even the same A15 binding processor as the iPhone 13, which doesn't give you a compelling enough reason to wait for it and not to mention that it will be available at full price for some time. Whereas you can find good discounts and maybe a few more offers on the iPhone 13 right now. It will be really interesting to see what Apple brings along with the next set of regular iPhones. Because other than the promotion support, which I honestly don't think most average users care about, this phone has most of the things that you could wish for in an iPhone. Well, those are my thoughts after having this phone for about 6 months. To put it simply, I think if anyone is going to spend over 65,000 rupees on a phone, they should get this one. After having used it again for the last couple of weeks, the only thing which I don't like about it is that it's my wife's main phone and not mine. I've been using the iPhone 13 Pro as my main phone for the last 4 months and I'm also working on its full review, so if you guys have any questions about it, make sure to drop them in the comments and I will answer them in the video. If you guys want to get this iPhone 13, I will really appreciate if you get it from the affiliate link in the description section. Also make sure to check out the MacBag store by clicking on the link in the description for amazing cases and accessories for your new iPhone. That is it for this video guys. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for a lot more quality tech videos like this. You can also check out some of the other videos from this channel. This has been Saga and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.